Recently, the streets have been rough. Crime is on the rise. They threaten to ban TikTok, which is devastating for my already dying brain cells. And the channel isn't even at a million subs yet, so something is definitely wrong. Which is why today I decided to hang up my Batman cape in real life and instead simulate how my nights go by playing the official Batman video game. This is a simulator, by the way, and not a fiction game, since I am Batman. But anyways, today I platinumed the Batman video game by Telltale. There is a total of 31 trophies inside of it, and a completely original story made up by the legends over at Telltale. Every single trophy is story, by the way, so all you have to do is complete the game. But the real challenge comes in with resistant Catwoman. If you know, you know. So the game opens up with the City Hall security guard who was probably just talking to his divorce attorney on the phone, getting popped in the head immediately. What a genius start. We then watch as the goons, if you will, try to break into the room with power tools. Always dangerous. Gordon also shows up and spots the dead man. Typical. And there I am, Batman, ready to start punching men and not killing, just traumatizing them. I'm also already starting to feel bad for these poor people because clearly they aren't very aware of their surroundings and this is sort of bullying. Poor dude really didn't wonder what the hell that that giant man flying into the window was. It's kind of hilarious though. So yeah, I then just spent quite a few minutes tying up, torturing, but in a PG-13 way, and getting rid of all these criminals. The disgust ended though when Catwoman, or whatever her name is, ended up being here also. And she is such a distraction from the job, I almost got caught up from an enemy behind me. Anyway, she ended up taking some disk drive, so then we of course had to chase after her for many minutes trying to get it back. And Catwoman definitely got the message after all the combat we exchanged back and forth, because we got the disk drive back and she even just threw herself off of a building after her failure. And we also threw an EMP at her which disabled her electronics that would have caught her. So uh, this whole no killing thing might be over before it even started. Yes, I will admit, I thought about dropping her. Okay, it's a normal thought. Anyways, we then flirted for a hot second before getting clawed in the face. But hey, the game's first trophy popped for finishing that sort of intro section. The story then picks up with the first episode of the game, and Bruce is holding a party for Harvey Dent's political campaign um, inside of his own mansion. Kind of odd, but hey, being rich must be nice. Before the video continues, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive combined arms vehicle combat game ever made and is available free on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. You can download it right now using my link in the description and pin comment to immediately take control of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, ships, and many more from the 1920 war era, all the way to modern day fighter jets and battle tanks. But it's not just hitboxes you are unloading into, my friend. Each vehicle in the game is modeled down to its individual component in real life. So you can truly become just like your grandfather in the war. And you can immerse yourself like no other game because of the highly detailed vehicles, graphics, and authentic sound effects. But if you don't like certain game modes, that's not to worry because there is a mode for every player type you could ever imagine. You got arcade for those fast match type players like myself, which is personally my favorite since as you all know, I move very fast. And then there is a simulator mode for those highly intelligent gamers that love a challenge. And finally, a realistic mode, which is a bit of both at once to let you taste the different sides of war. You can also customize your vehicles endlessly with countless camouflages, historical markings, and decorations for all types of vehicles, including community-created ones. And you don't even need any additional hardware, and a controller will do just fine. The game runs on an in-house developed engine to ensure zero-like experiences that we all love, so don't wait and join the worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles right now. There is simply no game better suited for fans of military history, and if you if you haven't played in the last six months by using my link below, you will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms. That includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle Availer, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. So it's time to decorate your vehicles in style. Everything's available for a limited time only, so be quick. Anyways, after a while, Carmine Falcone shows up and if you can't tell by just pure visual appearance, the dude is a massive mobster, criminal, whatever you want to call him. And my dumbass thought we needed to try and be friends with the dude, so I shook his hand and even and agreed to have a private meeting with the guy. Yeah, he ended up not wanting to be my friend. I don't know why, I literally chalked his pool cue and everything. If anything, I'm just his bitch now, so that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. We then just did some work down in the Batcave after the party ended, and Bruce got invited to some park to meet an old friend from childhood. But before that, we got a trophy for finishing another episode of the game. Before the meeting in the park even began though, I ended up getting mugged by a bunch of homeless people probably on that Zaza. And look, homeboy who wanted to meet in the park decided to show up finally, and we then just beat up these homeless people. This has gotta be a bad look for Wayne Enterprises. That's what I'm saying! 
Anyways, this guy's name is Cobbleplop or something. We just call him the Penguin because he's actually super evil and warns us about a revolution that he wants to start. If that doesn't scream terrorist, I don't know what does. The next part of this episode then had me going to talk up Harvey to the press, and somehow they got a picture of Bruce shaking Falcone's hand at the party last night, and immediately assumed I was evil. So yeah, I then ran away because I was afraid. But hey, another trippy pop, so who cares? Back at the crib, the police are now investigating Wayne Manor because of the whole Falcone thing, and you tell me what's worse. Police raiding your house in broad daylight or a pretty girl who says we need to talk. Bruh. Oh yeah, and to blow off steam, we went to have lunch with Harvey who brought his new, air quotes, girlfriend. And she is, of course, Catwoman. Why can't there ever be a normal woman in this world, for God's sake? Thankfully, when nighttime fell, I got to throw on the cape and let out all this pent-up anger. Just kidding, everyone is already dead, so naturally we get to piece together what happened. Thankfully, this game has a shockingly good and well-made clue system, which was actually loads of fun. And once we piece together that some new chemicals make people go crazy and that there was like a sniper dude in this room dropping cops, we then had to find the sniper in the room since he is probably still there. And we found him very easily since he accidentally secreted fluids out of his body. Same here, brother, same here. Also, a trophy popped before we confronted him. Once confronting him, we then interrogated him about Falcone and the chemicals. I also broke all of his ribs, by the way. But I didn't break his arm if you're wondering. So I don't know why he ratted me out to the cops. What a jerk. Alfred then gave me a big speech on being too brutal to the criminals, but come on. Justice needs to be served hot or cold, and there's no microwave out in the streets. <laughs> Anyways, we also opened that disk drive we stole from Catwoman. On it was basically a ton of info and dirt on Falcone and his whole operation. So we gave that to Gordon, of course, to clear our names. Not gonna lie, rats get justice in prison, so hopefully we don't go to prison. Anyways, we then put the cape on once more and actually got to serve some real justice. No more of this clue-solving BS. Instead, I got to plan out each and every attack on the guards that Falcone has in his club. And let me tell you, some of these were just brutal as brutal can be, and it was epic. I actually think my Wii Wii a little doing this. What did he say? But then we got to confront Falcone and he was all alone. Psych, he had a turret sitting in the ceiling. That's just not good fighting etiquette. But with the use of bombs and testosterone, I was able to best him after a while. And I then interrogated him a little to find out some personal info. But I was then put with a choice to brutalize him or just arrest him. Now I ain't no bitch and I want the world to know, so I did indeed brutalize the guy. And I feel no shame. We'll do it again. Oh yeah, and we got a trophy, of course. Also, by the way, I should mention poor Bruce found out his parents actually were super evil and in with the mob and stuff. So that's awkward, but another trophy popped after his tantrums, and that was the end of story one, or whatever you want to call it. Part two, or episode two, I can't honestly remember how they organized these. But the next part of the game began with the scene having Bruce reflect inside the same alleyway his parents got killed in when he was a child. Also, the press is still battering his family around because they are indeed evil. But Bruce felt like he missed something from this fateful night his parents died, so we get to relive all the action over again and see what really happened. Turns out someone hired the guy to kill them, so it really was an assassination after all. With this new revelation, Bruce now makes it his goal to find out who hired them. You know, as you would. And we got a trophy for the intro's finish. We then go to visit Carmine Falcone since he is under police custody, both from the dirt we gave the police and also to recover from being impaled with a rusty rod from a few minutes ago. <laughs> Basically, we ask him who hired the guy and all that as you would expect, and we expected him to just say, oh, you got me, I did it. But he claims not to have, and as he was about to spill the beans, bro just got dropped by a rogue lady cop. Unexpected, yes. Surprised, no. <laughs> However, we would find out that she actually had been drugged and wasn't totally aware of her actions, so I guess she gets a pass. Next, this lady who always wants to talk about her feelings showed up, and she's low-key starting to piss me off. Kind of sus, to be honest. Usually, they leave by now. But we chatted it up until she gave me a trophy, so that's nice. We then did some chemical gene splicing to find out what the drug is and what it does. Yeah, so we concluded it just makes it hard to control yourself. So basically, you become like my ex-girlfriends. But then we tracked down the penguin on this handy-dandy map hologram and went after him since Justice needs to be served for some reason that we don't yet know. After showing up though, the penguin pretty much just wanted to chat for a while and it was kind of annoying. And not only because he has a European accent, but he ended up leaving us with this giant blue guy and I'm still confused as to what this is. My first theory was the Smurf King, but since that movie series ended back in 2017, it can't be that. Anyways, the blue guy pretty much just whooped our ass and we were left all alone. Typical night ending with nothing but more trophies. We then took up playtime in the real world as Bruce doing some first-hand investigating looking for woman. Now, a bar isn't a great place to find one, but I did make friends with this intimidating biker guy and we were low-key vibing. Then a girl got in the way of it and I was kind of pissed. Always remember, 
bros before hoes. We then had a chat with her for a while because remember, this girl is actually Catwoman, I know. It's easy to forget about them. As a wise man once said, there's a thousand you and only one of me. Anyways, a bunch of dudes came after her next, so we had a classic bar fight which ended with us hiding from the cops in an alleyway. And we get confronted with the dilemma of kissing her or not. I'm not gonna lie, I accidentally pressed this, I swear. Stop the cap. <laughs> But yeah, we got another trophy to fill the endless void of her heart. It was then time again to throw in the good old cape and do some vigilante work. Tonight's menu had Mayor Hill on the chopping block because he was in with Falcone and Bruce's father back in the good old days before everyone was dead. We of course interrogated him on whether he hired the man to kill our parents or not, and he pretty much said, yeah, it was him. Now, sadly, we couldn't kill the guy because these cops came in and that is a bad look on top of our already bad look, but we did get a trophy. We then did some crime fighting work on the back computer and found out that the mayor debate has most likely been crashed with criminals everywhere. So we of course then made our way there and talked to Gordon about the game plan a little bit before Catwoman showed up and crashed our bro hangout. Lame, not gonna lie. So that's unfortunate, but what's even worse is that the criminals including Penguin have quite literally taken over the whole debate and are just killing people inside, so that's not good. We then of course had to get through enemies as sneakily as we could as to not alert Penguin that we are indeed here, but eventually we made it out to him and then did some true crime fighting to save everyone the best way we could. However, it all went to hell again like usual and we got posed with the option to save Harvey or save the girl. And I have been failing on my bros before hoes way of life, so I chose to save Harvey to try and make up for my past mistakes. I don't think she was happy though. Understandable. So yeah, we pretty much won or I guess saved the day the best we could and got another trophy. Next, we returned to Harvey a few days later and brought him flowers as if we were lovers. We aren't, at least I don't think so. But yeah, we chatted for a while before the conversation got dry and then I headed out. Nighttime then came and Gordon finally invented the bat signal and we of course came to it. And yeah, he pretty much just wanted to show us that, so we got a trophy. And I'm not gonna lie, this next part was extraordinarily boring. We literally just saved this reporter lady. At least, I think it was her. I don't really know, though, because she was invisible. But I did get a trophy after that. We then got to actually go see Bruce do some real work in the real world at his job that he is never at. And even though it was my first day, this lady straight up said, hey, sorry to tell you this, but the board is gonna vote you out later, so be emotionally ready for that. I then went down into the caves and got emotional support from Lucius because he's my homeboy. And we actually talked so long that I got a trophy for it. Yeah. Yeah, so then I did get fired pretty much, and my replacement at Wayne Enterprises was no one other than the Penguin. I'm pissed. Like, this is secondhand anger right now. So I beat the shit out of him. I then went and talked to Harvey about my problems because he is losing his mind right now also. And that annoying girl called me on my phone again while I was here, and we set up a meeting so Batman can find out more about the Children of Arkham, which is the gang Penguin is a part of. Oh, and I got another trophy. At the meeting, I also gained nothing aside from this piece of paper with an address on it where the Arkham Children, or whatever they are called, have a base thing. Naturally, I went there and for like 10 minutes I had to solve the puzzle as to what is going on. We ended up finding out that they are making chemicals here and plan to release them by train to thousands of people ruining Gotham. So of course, they all showed up after a while, including Lady Arkham, who is the scary lady in the scary suit. Also, Catwoman was here because she has like a deal with them or something. But all in all, we teamed up in the end and had a considerably big fight against Lady Arkham, which ended with us taking out her train and chemicals. However, Batman suffered some serious trauma and Catwoman took him back to her place. And we got a trophy. Oh, and you know, we also had some fun with Catwoman at her place because Bruce is definitely deprived of a woman's touch much like how you are also. But in the morning, it was indeed a mistake, and Harvey came by and spotted us, so that's awkward. He then sort of threw a tantrum for a hot minute until leaving, but only after trashing the apartment. Bruce then had to give a speech later that day announcing his resignation from Wayne Enterprises. And there was a whole script and all that I was supposed to follow, but I ain't nobody's bitch, so I completely steered away from it and told everyone the truth. Yeah, they didn't like that. And I was also drugged in the crowd and attacked the penguin a bit later. Oopsies, but hey, a trophy. So apparently while I was all drugged out, I also got thrown into Arkham Asylum, and that is where the game is at now. Immediately, some men were let into my cell and were about to beat my ass. But thankfully, the Joker showed up to save me. What a nice guy. I sure hope he isn't like a psychopath or anything. And also, we got a trophy. This next part of the game essentially just had us talking to crazy people before the Joker made a distraction and allowed us to get a call out to Gordon so he could then get us out of here. After the call, we also got a trophy. So then we got let out of prison like you'd expect because we got those good, good connections. However, the public now hates us and we almost got mugged in the safety of our car by the citizens of Gotham and the totally uncorrupt police department. The rest of this part of the game then had us go to some house and search it for clues because it belonged to 
Vicky Vale's adopted parents. Vicky Vale, by the way, is that annoying reporter girl who always wants to talk about feelings with me. And she's also Lady Arkham, so yeah. Basically, she killed both of her adopted parents brutally, and we got attacked after finding it out, as you would expect. But we saved this boy that was hiding there, and also Gordon showed up fashionably late like usual, but we did get a trophy. We then pretty much just watched Harvey Dent trash us on TV and got another trophy. This game is so weird, I don't understand how the levels work. Next, we of course confronted Harvey for his trash talking, and he didn't have much to say. The guy is certifiably insane, I'm not gonna lie. So we then talked to Gordon, and he's the homie, love that guy. But again, not much happened, and we got another trophy. Thankfully, this next part of the game actually had some action occur, and we barged on into Wayne Towers to confront the penguin finally. First, we had to get through all of his minions and stuff, which wasn't horrible. We also did tussle with him a tad bit until ending up down in Lucius Fox's den and fought some more there. Eventually, I did bitch throw him into the ground and he got knocked out, so a good day's work. Oh, and yeah, Wayne Manor got burned down a little bit, so that's sad, but we did get a trophy. It was then the final part of the game, and it began with us saving Gordon from being gunned down from his own men shameless and we got a trophy next we confronted harvey again but as bruce this time so maybe a friendly face would cheer him up nope nope i don't i don't think that worked because the gun was then in my face a few minutes later but poor harvey is indecisive and can't choose where to shoot me so he asked his coin for advice and i grabbed his coin and threw it away which is why the idiot jumped after it and probably paralyzed himself in the process what a genius and yeah we got a trophy after that the cat woman then told us she is leaving us for superman and i couldn't care less i have a job to do so i headed back to wayne manor only to find out that Alfred has been abducted by Lady Arkham and the crime scene is ugly, which is why we spent a hot minute reconstructing it to find out what happened and to get this trophy. We then did more chasing down of Lady Arkham and found this torture cellar which leads us all the way back to Arkham Asylum, because she is apparently going to release all of the inmates there and cause chaos. Honestly, great plan and I got a trophy. We then ended up finding Alfred in this weird ass place, but Lady Arkham was about to kill the guy so I chose to rip off the good old mask as a distraction tactic and it worked, which also gave me a trophy. The rest of this game then just just had us battle Lady Arkham down here for a very long time actually. That is, until she got crushed by the falling ceiling which she probably caused. We then basically just watched cutscenes for a while until the ending of the game had Gordon give a press conference on everything that just happened to the citizens. Oh and yeah, he also almost got assassinated. I may or may not have froze up, we don't talk about it. But here's the final trophy and the platinum right after. Anyways, once more I want to say a big thanks to today's sponsor, War Thunder. Don't forget to play it for free on PlayStation, Xbox, or PC now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. And remember, new and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. So download now with the link in the description, and thank you all for watching.